Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, power user masking tips in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, uh, I get this question a lot. What version am I using of Premiere Pro? Whatever the published date is, that's the uh, the current version. It, it, I'm using 9.1 right now. If you don't have this option, if you're in CS6, you cannot do this. Um, what I wanna show you are a couple of really important things that, that um, over the last little while, I've heard a lot of problems that people have with masking. And it's very uh, easy to get mixed up, especially if you come from Illustrator, from After Effects, from Photoshop, you might expect the pen tool to work in a certain way. And it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And you can get yourself in a hole. Let's have a look. Um, oh yeah, also I wanna thank uh, Kurt Pear for all of this wonderful footage. All right. So I have a clip selected down here and I'm gonna mask this guy out on the bike in my effects control panel. If you don't see that, reset your workspace. I'm, I'm just gonna to go to my uh, editing workspace in my effects controls. If you don't have a clip selected, you have nothing there. Click on a clip. If you don't have this area open on the right, click on this little triangle, boop, and open it up. All right. There's three settings in here, more if you have audio. This clip doesn't have audio and you'll notice opacity. If you twirl down the triangle, you'll see three different masks and Adobe originally introduced the ellipse and the uh, polygon mask. It says four point, but it, it, it's unlimited points. You can add as many as you want. Um, and then they added the free draw Bezier path. Now I'm going to take you through all of these and I want to show you what happens when I click on the elliptical mask. It immediately uh, puts it in the middle and it's an ellipse. If you click in the center, notice how I have a hand out here. I have a pointer uh, in there. I have a hand. And if you go near the points, you can move the points. If you go outside, it becomes uh, an arrow. And if you click and drag, you can see how you can range select points, okay? If you want to draw more points in here, here's what a lot of people will do, is they'll go back over here thinking that this pen tool is a tool. It's a tool, but it's also gonna make another mask. Watch this, click, I've made another mask and my mask disappears. Why? Because now I've got a mask on a mask and it doesn't work that way. If you want to draw more points, um, do it this way. First of all, I want to delete this. Notice that when you're clicking on the mask name, you can select the mask. So I want to delete this, click on it, and delete. Now if I want to go back and, and select the mask, you can see the results of the mask. To select the mask, you might think you click on the mask path. You don't. You click on the mask name. Okay, now I showed you that you have the hand on the inside, the arrow on the outside. Watch what happens when you get close. Oh, it turns to a plus. Click, and you've added another point. So instead of having to get many tools and work like something like a Photoshop would do and getting a pen tool, you have the pen tool already when you're in the mask mode, when that mask is selected on the left. If I deselect, I have, I, I, and I click on here, I can't do anything. So you make sure you click on the mask name, then you have those. If you mouse over again and hold the control key on Windows Command on the Mac, you'll see that the previous plus is turned into a minus. So you can click and remove a point. The same thing applies with selecting outside, select all of these, then click on one, and I'm moving this around. You can also use the arrow keys, so with those selected, the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm moving this one pixel at a time. This is really cool when you have to have one pixel accuracy. I mean, I defy anyone, uh, you can if you're careful, but trying to move a mask with a mouse or a Wacom tablet one pixel at a time, that's a hard thing to do. Here, we just use our arrow keys, Add the shift key and it jumps in larger increments. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. So we can be accurate. Now I'm going to go back and delete this and I'll show you the same with the uh, polygon mask, a rectangle mask. The same thing applies here. You can drag those points around. You can go over this edge and add a point. 
the dotted line that you're seeing is the default mask feather on the left, which is 10. And this tool here will change those values. So clicking on the little circle on the outside, there is the mask feather, and then the one further down is the mask offset that you can drag out. Okay, let's delete that one, and now just grab the um, free draw bege. So as soon as I click on it, it's drawn a mask. Keep clicking on it, and you're going to draw a lot of masks. Believe it or not, I've had that question a lot from people. Again, because they think it's a tool. Oh, I'll go get the pen tool. Well, you're doing two things. You're getting the pen tool, and you're also making another mask. So don't do that. All right, let's do that once and grab that. Now when I'm clicking here, I'm actually clicking and drawing corner points. If I click and drag, then I'm drawing a smooth point. If I click here, notice that the mask isn't working until I close this. If you don't accurately click in here over top, you won't actually see the effects of the mask. So now when I click, now I have the effects of the mask. And now when I go over that same point, it's just a regular, um, pointer tool. You'll also notice that you have to be zoomed in to get a certain accuracy in here. I'm holding down the Alt key on the, uh, Windows, the Option key on Mac, and you see how my pointer turns to a convert point. This is the exact same as Illustrator, as Photoshop, After Effects, where you can click and convert this to a smooth corner point, or uh, sorry, you can go between a corner point and a smooth corner point. You do have to be uh, accurate to a certain level, um, and you might have to click in here and zoom in to see this, okay? And sometimes you need to zoom in. Now, one other tip, when I'm zoomed in like this, if I am adding uh, keyframes, if you have a scroll wheel, you can actually scroll through your footage with your scroll wheel in this area. If you're down here, you're gonna scroll through down here, but if you're inside here, you're gonna scroll and that helps you out. Now, I want to uh, also show you, and thanks to Orion Skate for this one, uh, he, he asked me if you can animate from a corner point, so you can see that's a hard point, and I'm going to click on my mask path, because if you want to animate this, you're gonna have to set a keyframe. Notice there's no keyframes over here. I'll click, I've added a keyframe, and at that point, I have a corner point. If I move ahead a little bit further, Alt or uh, Option, click and drag, you'll notice I've automatically created another point. And when I go back, you'll see those handles will close up. Again, thanks to Orion Skate for alerting us to that one. And let's zoom back out so we can see that effect. All right. Some really important tips uh, to help you when you're working with these masks, uh, especially all the I've created five masks. That's an easy one to do. All right, thanks everyone for all of your wonderful support here on Video Revealed. It's just great. It's great and it fuels us even more to make even more uh, tutorials. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed, please just take a moment and subscribe. Until next time, oh yeah, and there's a link in the uh, description for you to get your free 30-day trial to Adobe Creative Cloud if you're not already using it. All right, until next time, I'm Colin Smith. It's my job to get you looking your best.